The Nimrod Castle, which translates as Castle of the Large Cliff, is an astonishing ancient fortress. And although this awe-inspiring site has predictably been dated to the medieval era, we feel that due to the many anomalous megalithic blocks within its construction, it is far older than this and undoubtedly a remnant left by a highly advanced civilization now unfortunately lost to history. This due to academia's funded and often deliberate ignorance. Many of the oldest blocks present within the structure, for example, are all upwards of 10 tons, with some of the heaviest recognized as being over 40 tons in weight. How modern curators and academics alike can attest to these ruins having been created by our tremendously less capable medieval ancestors, we feel, is preposterous. According to those in the so-called No, the fortress was created from scratch during the Ayyubid dynasty, placed within the 12th and 13th centuries. The dynasty undoubtedly existed, this we do not deny. We also do not disagree with the posit that the dynasty ruled large parts of the Middle East during these centuries. However, we suspect that, just like the many other unexplainable ancient advanced ruins found throughout the world, these more recent ruling ancestors, and indeed the large array of ancient artifacts which they left, creating an archaeological legacy, has been used to conveniently date and explain this miraculous structure away, avoiding the controversial truth which is clear for all to see. The fortress is situated on the southern slopes of Mount Hermon, upon a ridge that rises over 2,600 feet above sea level overlooking the Golan Heights. We feel that due to its strategical location, much of the structure was rebuilt upon. This task completed with the purpose of guarding a major access route. We believe that upon the leader of this dynasty, Al-Aziz Uthman, Discovering the enormous, impenetrable polygonal masonry still in existence within the walls of the site that were left by a people who, at some point within antiquity, mysteriously vanished. This leader made the logical decision to build upon the impressive remnants, with these walls being reused, utilized for a more modern fortress. This second phase predictably made with far smaller blocks and thus can be easily explained as medieval architecture. A fortress could have indeed been its original purpose, this due to its strategically placed location. Indeed, other ancient, advanced, seemingly impenetrable fortresses can be found in other places within the world, such as Sacsayhuaman. Although its true grandeur or its initial advanced builder's intention for the structure may take tremendous, meticulous, alternative research to eventually unravel. Furthermore, intriguingly, the enigmatic yet highly recognizable shape of this initial stonework is also present at another site, possibly a number of other sites, although in particular within Jerash, a site currently claimed as Roman. Who built the Fortress of Nimrod? How can academia claim that this site was built by the Ayyubid dynasty, while another ruin, unquestionably constructed with the same form of megalithic blocks, seemingly dating for the same era, be that of the Romans? We feel that these two sites, each containing the same building features, yet claimed as completely different civilizations work, both placed within our more recent history, yet in vastly different centuries is clear evidence of academic fallacy, evidence of their explanative contradictions when it comes to the many currently controversial ancient ruins of Earth. Nimrod Fortress is yet another jewel in the crown of a civilization currently lost to history. It is undoubtedly highly compelling. We have previously covered the astonishing ancient fort known as Sagiria that can be found within Sri Lanka, an ancient sanctuary once constructed atop an enormous geological feature. Such an incredible feat in architectural engineering is clearly testament to our distant ancestors' past capabilities. 
with an entire ancient settlement once constructed around its base. This ancient fort provided such high levels of security, it would have been an obvious choice for re-inhabitation. These re-inhabitations, as mentioned before, would have allowed for these ancient people to have prospered and thus successfully leave their mark upon history. However, these more modern lodgers have been attributed as the builders of said sites, regardless of any explanation as to how remaining absent. Another of these intriguing forts is known as Harihar Fort. Found within India, this ancient fort also displays many of the telltale signs we often look for to indicate whether an ancient ruin is actually far older than modern academia are claiming with a staircase once effortlessly and precisely cut into the sheer rock face, intriguingly absent a support brace that was once also attached to the rock face. Atop the fort, numerous caverns once carved out of the formation along with a number of ancient stone structures that, although we feel were also left by lost civilization, were possibly left by a later inhabitation than the original construction. This hypothesis being based upon the levels of erosion witnessed upon the stairways, compared to the much better condition of these surviving mortarless structures atop. Indeed, although the stairway has all but eroded away in some areas, and experienced heavy erosion everywhere else, the stone structures found atop the fort, due to their considerably better condition, we feel were seemingly built much more recently yet still containing a level of build precision our more recent ancestors were lacking. Regardless of the extreme erosion present at the fort, along with the precision ancient masonry found atop, according to academia, Harihar Fort was built during the Pankaj Pancharya period, a mere 400 years ago. Who built these astonishing ancient forts within ancient India? When were they built? How did they build them? With so many unexplained anomalies, along with the vast array of academic contradictions, we find Harihar Fort highly compelling. Among the beautiful Greek islands, there is one in particular, Euboa, which hides a secret, one of the most enigmatic mysteries to be found anywhere within the Mediterranean. Built into the landscape of the island, 25 ancient yet masterfully built and geologically camouflaged structures, which are known as Dracospita, or the Dragon Houses, still found dotting the island's landscape. Often built using enormous multi-ton limestone blocks, thus making their explanation very difficult to explain, and also quite possibly multiple remnants of a now lost but once technologically and capably advanced civilization one which far predated that of our own well-known, well-studied ancestors. The true age, origin, or indeed past function of these mysteriously, curiously named dragon houses remains a complete mystery. Now found in varying degrees of decay, yet the substantial erosion present in some areas of some of the dragon houses is indicative of a civilization far predating any known, or more specifically, academically permitted groups as having once been responsible. Researchers working for ancient code have posited that many of the surviving dragon houses were built using, quote, cyclopean masonry, and after exploring the curious structures ourselves, we seem to concur with this opinion. Yet the mystery as to why these buildings were made in the first place, the motivation for their curious creation, still remains. According to said research, the locals dubbed the structures dragon houses, this because local legend telling of attributes in which their creators possessed they were supposedly bestowed with superhuman powers. This conclusion, however, is disagreed with, and rather ironically, using the exact same feature which proved these buildings are inexplicable, is now argued as having been inspired by later rediscoverers due to the size of the stone blocks used in the building process something modern academia, due to a lack of an ability to explain said anomaly, would simply ignore this aspect during their own explorations of the site. It seems that although those funded to provide the answers, when found lacking, are more than happy to continue to provide a status quo 
often in blatant denial of facts in front of us all. A tale of events which does not ruffle the feathers of those who fund said research. Thus, such practices can be looked upon as job security, displays of allegiance to those who pull the strings of said institution. Thus, although capable, funded individuals have a reoccurring habit of overlooking the same said features over and over again. However, those with other, often self-funded motivations, or indeed, a set of sturdy foundational ethics, then those with a keen eye for facts can always expose that which is ignored by others with an agenda. These valiant pioneers, these modern-day Indiana Jones, have an opportunity to approach that which has not yet been explained, with curiosity and a hunger for the truth, which could make them the person who alters the world around them and ultimately makes a real difference to the world around you. Wikipedia states, Dragons can not only mean a reptilian fire-breathing giant lizard, but also man, those who possess superhuman powers. Furthermore, according to Wikipedia, there is no accepted theory about the identity of the builders, nor an agreed estimation on their dating. No mention is identified in classical texts, and the first account so far known to have been cited dates from the 18th century, done by the British geologist-traveler-writer John Hawkins. The first detailed account, after Hawkins, was by German archaeologist H. N. Ulrichs, written in 1842. The French classical scholar Jules Girard visited Euboa and described the Ochi dragon houses in detail. In 2010, Swiss archaeologist Karl Rieber successfully tracked down all to-date reported buildings, subsequently published a report upon the completion of his research. Yet, alas, any explanation as to their original purpose, or indeed true age, was predictably lacking from the report. Thus, the site is currently crying. Capable antiquarians are desperately needed to explore and unravel the mysterious dragon houses of Greece. Houses we find highly compelling. Many of the most astonishing feats of ancient engineering are often avoided by historians, with many historical research materials absent their existence, due to their unexplainable origins. The reason for this should be obvious, for when one gazes upon such relics, instantly struck with wonder. A curiosity as to how something of such incredible size or skill could have been created by the individuals these sites are often claimed as the work of. This is one of the main theses of the channel, for not only are these sites largely ignored and thus overlooked regardless of being historically important structures, clear yet suppressed evidence that a civilization far more capable than any currently recorded within permitted timelines once flourished on Earth. Relics with a very different origin and indeed history. We believe that such structures were instead rediscovered by the many academically claimed builders, and this is often argued as being supported by empirical archaeological evidence. However, the archaeology merely proves inhabitation, not construction. With a record of construction never found within any of these academically claimed cultures' surviving records, merely having re-inhabited such structures for strategic motivations and in doing so, left their own archaeological footprint, subsequently concealing an unknown aspect of human history, one which came to an abrupt end and one such site largely unknown by the greater world, is known as the Herodium. What makes this structure so incredible is not the small arrangement of stone structures within the center of the build, but the earthwork itself, the entire site's footprint and indeed, the volume of earth utilized in the making of this ancient earthwork was of gigantic proportions. A seemingly pyramid-sized volume of earth used in the building of what can only be described as a respectably sized hill made by the hands of ancient man. Once one inspects this site from the air, 
its huge size becomes apparent, and the incredible feat this once was, an undertaking, if in fact constructed with primitive tools, would have been a task of unimaginable hardship. Thousands of tons of earth were at some point quarried and then transported to this spot, subsequently creating an incredible well-sheltered inhabitation with an intimidating incline on all sides. Many similar earthworks can be found throughout the United Kingdom, with the biggest pyramid in Europe known as Silbury Hill. Mysteriously made completely of chalk, yet this little mentioned site dwarfs Silbury Hill by some measure. The question is, how old is Herodium? Who made it? How did they accomplish such a feat? It is, undoubtedly. Hakeberg, meaning Fortress of Hake, is an ancient, once fortified ruin found within the Gurpinar district of the Van province in Turkey's Easter Anatolia region. It was used by Eurasian kings as a fortress during the 8th century BC. According to academia and Armenian folklore, the fortress was built by Haik, the legendary founder of the Armenian nation. It was situated close to the site where he slew the invading Babylonian King Bel, who, according to said legends, was, in fact, an ancient giant. Haik and his people had migrated south toward the warmer lands. There, they discovered a wicked giant known as Bel. Bel tried to impose his tyranny upon Haik's people, but Haik refused to submit. Haik eventually rose up and defeated Bel in what has become known as the Battle of Giants. However, what is intriguing regarding this story is the fact that the sites mentioned are actually ruins left by the same highly advanced and thus highly capable lost civilization, responsible for many of the exquisitely stone-built sites which dot the many continents of Earth. Additionally, the fact that ancient giants are again mentioned surrounding such ruins could be seen as a compelling lead. Easter Island, Guatemala, the Amazon, Peru, South America, the list goes on, all with their own intriguing tales of ancient giants, either once inhabiting said sites, or in some cases, noted as being responsible for their construction. Much of the ancient site is now extremely eroded, yet in many areas, such as Cavustepe, a number of remarkably refined stone blocks are still to be found, presumably once foundation stones, these blocks still retaining their extraordinary machined-like appearance. These blocks were so perfectly carved, we can only replicate such levels of accuracy using modern-day technologies. The question is, how did a civilization so far back within known history create so many stones cast to the same degree of precision. What's more, these masterfully and mysteriously created stones are seemingly placed upon an even older site, one clearly of an even greater antiquity. Were these newer stone blocks actually robbed stonework from another area of the structure? These blocks then used by a later civilization to build upon these ruins? Are we actually looking upon two lost ancient civilizations' work in ascending order? Rather like what we have postulated later covered the enormous skeletal blocks of the Great Pyramid. Were these sites actually the work of a lost civilization of ancient giants? Or are all these separate accounts of the same beings found all over the world a mere coincidence. With so many sites and legends attached thereof telling the same thing, it is only a matter of time before the truth is proven beyond doubt. Scotland is a country which holds many mysterious tales of ancient beings who were said to once dwell within the astonishingly beautiful highlands. From fairies to ancient sea monsters, many a legend is said to be found here including the odd piece of compelling evidence to back up such claims. However, our next Scottish mystery of focus is abundant with evidence. In fact, the evidence left surrounding this mysterious ancient technology is actually the mystery itself. Over 200 years ago, archaeologists exploring the ancient ruins found to dot the rural countryside began to notice a remarkable characteristic of about 60 mysterious structures found dotting the Scottish Highlands. 
Made using rocks with no mortar, instead, the rocks on the outer layer of these structures, upon completion, went through an as yet unknown process of vitrification. The builders of these extreme ancient forts were somehow able to heat the stones to such a degree that the outer layer actually turned to glass, fixing the stones in place and making them virtually impenetrable to erosion, meaning that the true age of these miraculous structures may be far, far older than we are led to believe. Although for the first 250 years of study, these forts were presumed to have been exclusive to Scotland, thanks to the results of the research, they have actually begun to turn up in other regions of the world, most specifically Western Europe. With such overwhelming evidence in the face of adversity, academia, it would seem, have reluctantly been resigned to agreement with the extremely controversial facts displayed within these ancient stone forts. Quote, no lime or cement has been found in any of these structures, all of them presenting the peculiarity of being more or less consolidated by the fusion of the rocks of which they are built. This fusion, which has been caused by the application of intense heat, is not equally complete in the various forts, or even in the walls of the same fort. In some cases, the stones are only partially melted and calcined. In others, their adjoining edges are fused so that they are firmly cemented together. In many instances, pieces of rock are enveloped in a glassy enamel-like coating, which binds them into a uniform whole, and at times, though rarely, the entire length of the wall presents one solid mass of vitreous substance. It is not clear why or how the walls were subjected to vitrification." End quote. Although the explanation put forward after examining these facts could be seen as a desperate attempt to continue to deny the existence of a highly aware, highly capable, intercontinental ancient civilization, which once flourished here on our planet. Who built these forts? What clearly advanced yet ancient heat technology did they use to turn the outer casing stones to glass? With the pace of such discoveries being revealed to the world increasing, it is only a matter of time before we find out.